Hey friends, welcome back. I am Jason and I'm working on the Apaka bike right here. What I've noticed on the motorcycle is after I've done a few modifications, like I've deleted the smog emissions nonsense that was on the side of the motorcycle there, whole bunch of spaghetti hoses and miscellaneous nonsense that was unnecessary is now gone. And, uh, what I've noticed, and I changed the air filter. I put a foam air filter on there as opposed to the paper heavy cartridge type because it's just gonna be easier to clean. Well, the paper ones you can't clean. So it's going to be able to be cleaned and I can reuse it over and over and over again. And it's gonna be more reliable on the trail. And, but now the mixture in the carburetor is off. So when the engine's cold, for example, you try to blip the throttle a little bit, it's, blip, 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 it misses and kind of wants to stall out a little bit because it's, getting, it's not getting enough fuel for the amount of air that's going into the engine. So the mixture's off. So by changing this jet kit out right here, I think what's going to happen is the engine's going to run significantly better, a little bit more performance. Hopefully, it doesn't decrease my fuel economy by very much at all. So guys, I'm not a performance junkie. This motorcycle has about 40 horsepower, give or take. It is way more than powerful enough for anything that I want to do on the motorcycle. I do not need more horsepower. I, I don't care about that. I'm not looking for that. I don't want it. <laughs> It'll only get me in trouble. So I want reliability. I want, I want this thing to run no matter what. I want to be able to go anywhere and everywhere on it, and I want to make sure that I'm not having to work on it on the side of the road or on the side of the trail somewhere. So um, everything that I'm doing to it, everything that I'm doing to it is not really to increase performance. It's to increase reliability, uh, longevity, uh, comfort. If you're on it for long periods of time like we are, like I, I'm planning on taking this thing on the next portion of the TAT, the TAT, the Trans-American Trail, which is basically from East Coast America to West Coast America, as much dirt road, trail, gravel as possible. Very little pavement involved on this, this route. And uh, I wanna be able to, you know, stay on the thing <laughs> and not crash. And if you get fatigued because of whatever reason, you're more likely to crash when you get tired. So uh, I might be doing some things for some comfort reasons, some some suspension things, so I can the hand the motorcycle handles a little bit better. Uh, but other than I mean, like I said, performance. I'm not trying to go faster. I'm not trying to get more horsepower and wheelie all all the way down the road. That's not what I'm after. I want reliability. Um, I'm trying to get from A to B. That's what I want. Just please hit the thumbs up subscribe to the channel if you haven't done so already. I really, really do appreciate it. I've opened up uh, memberships on the channel. So if you want to support the channel, please consider being a member. I'd be really, really grateful for that because I'm I'm really pushing to do more and more of this stuff and make it kind of my full-time gig. And I would, I would like to make that happen. But as you know, like anything else, it takes a lot of time and a lot of time and energy and investment uh, to, to make like something like that happen. So these videos that I produce, like this one's not that big a deal. Like it's, you know, I'm just turning on the camera and chatting with you. But uh, a lot of the videos that I produce, like the adventure type videos and the survival scenario type videos, those are huge, big investments in time, not only on the front end of recording them and setting the camera up and moving stuff around and, and going through the hassle of that, but the editing and all the stuff behind the scenes that you guys don't get to see is, uh, is a big job. And I'm really grateful to have that job. Please don't misunderstand me. I I love what I do, uh, but it's, uh, it is a big job and it's very time consuming and I'm working on making this kind of my full-time gig and any support and all support that you guys send my way, man, I just, I, I, I would be really, really, truly grateful for that. But anyway, let's get back to work on the old uh, uh, Rocco here. I don't know if you knew the name. If you've missed some of the videos working on this motorcycle, this motorcycle's named Rocco. So the bike's been running for about, I don't know, four or five minutes, something like that. And once it gets warm, it does that little bit of a miss. I don't know if you hear it, but once it, when it's cold, it does it really bad. It spits and sputters when you try to get on the gas. Uh, but once it's warm, it does that less and less and less, which is kind of typical for, uh, for a carbureted engine anyway. They always run better when they're warm. But if I really blip the throttle fast, I 
I'm debating on doing this at all because you know I've seen some other guys I looked it up before I did this before I bought this thing I looked up some videos of this and had some guys say that they had some trouble with it and they could never get the the thing to run right run correctly and they ended up going back to the stock jet anyway and I typically that's what I do I uh, I go stock as much as possible if if I don't have to change it don't change it because when you do things like that you end up with less reliability and that's at least in my experience same thing with guns guys that do all the fancy things with their guns and change the triggers and the springs and the stuff they always end up having problems at least it seems that way um, and I don't want to have problems now that the engine's been running for like let's say five minutes you know I I would imagine it's probably gonna start right up easy peasy and that little bit of a miss that it has when you give it some throttle. It's still there just a tiny bit, tiny bit on that quick, that quick blip of the throttle, it misses just a little. Hear that? So I don't know. I don't know if I'm going to change the thing out or not. I think what I might end up doing is just keeping it, keeping these jets because it's a good idea to have spare jets. If you should get like a blockage or something when you're on the road, it's pretty easy to pull the carb off and swap the jets out on the trail and they don't take up much space. I'll probably lose this big plastic clunky container thing and just take some of those, some of those jets in a much smaller container and then put it with my tool kit. That's most likely what I'll end up doing is just hanging on to it for safekeeping. So we'll see, I don't know, I don't, I don't like modifying things if I don't have to. I'm always hesitant to do such things. So I think I'm gonna stick with what I've got because it is running good. That, it bothers me a little bit when it does that, a little bit of a miss. I, I you know, I could possibly try it's, just kind of a pain pulling the carburetor off changing things out putting the carburetor back in starting it up warming it up it's just kind of a drag to do that so uh it just takes some time and experimentation to get it exactly where you want but a little bit bigger jet perhaps a little bit more fuel might give me the desired effect that i'm looking for but it also might hurt my fuel economy which i'm not interested in i want the thing to it gets pretty close to about 50 miles per gallon right now which is great uh, but if I was to change the jets out, I don't know what that would do to my fuel economy. So, and I'm hesitant to do that because of that reason too. So we'll see. We'll see. I'm going to hang on to that. I don't think I'm going to modify it yet. What have I done to make this motorcycle more unstoppable? I've added bark busters here, hand guards. So most, mostly for the reasons if you drop the motorcycle, you don't break your levers. Like I've already cracked my brake lever. Can you see that? I got JB Weld on there because <laughs> when I dropped the bike, I snapped that lever just or bent the lever just a little bit. And when I tried to straighten it, I cracked it. So I just patched it up with JB Weld and it's good to go. Problem fixed. I should probably put a new one on there, but not yet. Anyway, these bark busters with these custom PVC uh, pipe uh, hand guards on there, made those myself are getting the job done for that. I'm gonna be swapping the tires out pretty soon. I'm gonna be heading up to Southern Honda Power Sports in Chattanooga. I'm gonna take the scenic route, the very scenic route to get there on the Honda here. I'm gonna get the tires swapped out when I get up there. It's mostly just an excuse to go visit my buddy Shane that works at Southern Honda Power Sports right there. And a huge big shout out to them. They, they uh, helped me out with this motorcycle, uh, parts and equipment and gear and stuff. Awesome people, really, really friendly staff that works there, and I highly recommend it. So um, let's see. I'm going to get some some good meats on there, some more aggressive off-road type tires that are going to be able to handle the conditions that I like to ride in better. I've added a skid plate here, a bash plate. So when I am going over obstacles, logs, and rocks and stuff, I don't potentially damage my motor and or the frame which is extremely costly and could be a day ender type situation. So this heavy duty aluminum skid plate right there 
is gonna be the ticket. Huge big gas tank. Uh, with the stock tank, I could only go about, what was it, 100 miles? And I was out of gas. I ran out of gas twice. Basically, the first two times I rode this motorcycle, I ran out of gas. So I upgraded to a 22 liter, 5.8 gallons, I believe it is. Huge, big jumbo tank that I just filled up. Downside is the bike gets significantly heavier and top heavy when it's full of fuel, but it's a trade-off. Now I can go like 250 miles, give or take, uh, from what I've been, what I found so far. I can go about 250 miles without running out of gas before I have to switch over to reserve and then start really hunting. 250 miles is pretty significant in my book. Uh, I got rid of the huge big jumbo mirrors that stuck up here and what was happening when I was riding off road is stuff would hit it or just the vibrations in general would make them loose and they'd start spinning around. Really irritating and then they're hideous in the first place and I didn't have time for it. So I just put on this little, this little guy right there. That's what I've got there. I've got a way to charge my device with a USB port here right there and this will also tell me how much juice my battery's putting out and i can hook my phone up right here and use that as my navigation using gaia or whatever just you know google maps or something i could i could have that right there so when i'm sitting on top of the motorcycle it's easy to see and it'll get me from a to b and i can have it i could have a little short charging cord right there charging it up as i ride Let's see, I've changed the oil. I put a, a foamy air filter in here. There is a foam replaceable, cleanable air filter in there that is much, much lighter and uh, it doesn't have to be replaced. I can wash it in a sink somewhere or whatever. Uh, and that means that I don't have to carry one of those big, huge paper cartridges that this motorcycle came with that weighs like a pound. The foamies weigh nothing. So that's in there and it gives the motorcycle a little bit more air, breeze a bit better. What else have I done to this thing? Not a whole lot. I I got rid of the hideous I got rid of the hideous tail light, but it wasn't necessary. I just that was just personal preference right there and so now the motorcycle looks significantly better in my opinion. And I'm just I'm really liking this. This is an XR650 Honda XR650L and I really like it. It's simple, it's robust, it's reliable. That's what I want. I don't care about the performance. I'm not looking for a wheelie machine. I'm not trying to head out on the racetrack. I do not care about that stuff. What I want is to be able to get from A to B reliably without having to be broken down on the side of the road somewhere. I want to be able to find parts for it easily if I should need it, if I should break it for some reason. Uh, and a Honda is probably the easiest bike on the planet to find parts for, if I had to guess. So... Uh, I think that's most of the modifications that I've done to the bike. Is there anything else? Yeah, I think that's about it. Oh, I changed the gearing. I changed the gearing. So I, I put a, uh, I dropped it a gear on the front, uh, 14 tooth sprocket right here. And that would, that gears it lower. So when I'm riding at slow speeds on tighter, technical, smaller single track trails and stuff, I don't have to go so fast because the RPMs don't have to be, uh, it won't be lugged down so low because I've dropped it down a gear. Um, it, it's less likely to stall out. Uh, the RPMs will be higher at those slower speeds, if that makes sense. So that has been really helpful. I've actually really enjoyed that. And then at the highway speeds, like 55, 65 miles an hour, it's still not too, it's not, it's not ripping too, too many RPMs where it's going to be, um, you know, abusing the motor too much. So I think that that was the way to go. Anyway, this is pretty much it, man. I'm not going to do a whole lot more to this bike. I, I don't like to do things to make bikes unstock if I don't have to. Some things, like gu like guys, gun guys. Gun guys, the first thing they do is they buy the gun and then they look up all the videos and stuff and they say, oh, you you got to do this and this and this and this if you buy this thing. And then what happens oftentimes from what I've experienced with me and my buddies is that when you do that kind of stuff, you end up making the thing less reliable that goes for guns and motorcycles and gear and everything just in general the more crap you do to it oftentimes you can make the thing less reliable so you got to be cautious and be careful about that stuff if it doesn't need to be done for some specific reason don't do it i mean like bolt-on parts like this that's not gonna hurt anything or change any reliability or do anything like that the skid plate on the bottom that just makes that just makes sense 
yeah, do that, right? And it's not going to hurt any reliability factors. But when you start changing things, internal mechanisms, like messing with the carburetor, jetting and stuff like that, the less you can do to that, the better. I might end up changing the jet out, but I don't know. If I, if I don't have to do it, I won't. When the thing's really good and warm, it runs fantastic. So I'm probably not going to change those jets out. But... Uh, We'll see how that goes when it get the weather when the weather gets colder. Let's see how it starts and let's see how it runs in the colder weather, and we'll go from there. So I've got the kit if I should need it, and that is that. Anyway, guys, I really do appreciate you watching. Please hit the thumbs up. Let me know what you think about the Apaka bike here. Let me know what are some modifications that you think it might need. Let me know if this is a good form of transportation, an alternate form of transportation. I get a lot of comments about this bike. I post videos about this bike and I call it the Apaka bike or whatever, you know, and whatever, uh, whatever you want to call it, the zombie apocalypse motorcycle. People are always inevitably in the comment section. What if you have a family? Like, what are you going to do to bug out and leave your family? No, of course not. Like guys, don't be ridiculous. Like what I envision, uh, a, a machine like this for one, it's a ton of fun. I enjoy riding motorcycles and I, I just, I love the freedom and the feeling of the wind and the, uh, and the elements. You're hot when it's hot, you're cold when it's cold and it's raining and wet and you're out there in the, the maneuverability and the, you can just access some amazing places that you otherwise couldn't in a vehicle. I love it. But it's, an al it's a, also a, a very reliable, nimble, alternative form of, of, uh, of movement. If something should happen to my truck, and let's just say, we're not talking zombie apocalypse, we're just talking convenience. If, so, if my truck is broke down or, or whatever, I'm waiting on a part to come in for it, it's in the shop for whatever reason, I can go from A to B, I can still get around town on my motorcycle and I don't have to worry about, you know, borrowing my wife's vehicle or in, in being down to one vehicle. I've got an alternative form of, of travel right here. And then, you know, if fuel shortages should come and uh, money gets tight. Uh, this thing's very fuel efficient and I can, uh, I can cover a lot of miles, you know, traveling around town and stuff, uh, with very, very minimal fuel. And for that reason and that reason alone, it's, it's very valuable in my opinion. So just having a, a very capable alternative form of transportation like this, I think is pretty awesome. Yes, motorcycles are inevitably dangerous. I get that, of course. You're on two wheels, and if you crash, you can get hurt. Don't crash. <laughs> That's where practice comes into play. You should practice. You should ride slow. You should ride on small little back roads and stuff. Avoid high traffic areas because chances are if you get in trouble, it's because other cars are smashing into you. So I, I, I don't ride on highways as, as much as possible. I don't ride on the interstate. It's just not enjoyable. It's not fun to me unless I absolutely have to. And uh, so far, so good. Of course, I'm going to crash. I'm probably going to get hurt from time to time. But uh, hey, without risk, there is no reward. Until next time, guys, what's the worst that could happen? Let's go on three.